This tutorial is going to be about adding text, custom fonts, and changing text via JavaScript. So effectively, what we are going to do this tutorial is changing this text to actually show the real time. And we're going to do this by first removing the texture that is currently on there and replacing it with some dynamic text that is colored and uses a custom font. The font I chose for this that looks pretty similar to what we already have is the Comforta font, which I found on Google Fonts. What we are going to want to do is download this font. And what we're going to do next is just drag and drop the medium font into our asset browser. The file will then have appeared here. And for good measure, we're also going to copy the license. To keep our project organized, we're going to create a new folder and call that folder fonts. We can then move the license and the font into fonts. And now we have our custom font in our project. With the font moved into the fonts folder, we can now go to views, project settings, and then set the font setting to the right path. In this case, I chose the fonts path. I do not have a leading slash. The leading slash is only for editor root relative paths. And in this case, we want a project relative path as the font is inside our project directories. And I choose the font file by just specifying fonts slash comforta medium dot ttf. While editing, it will tell us that the path cannot be found. And once it actually finds the path and the path is correct, it will let us know in the log that it loaded the font from our path. Now we currently do not see anything changed in the scene and that is because we do not have any texts. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a text to our watch object here. And we go and find our watch object on the left quest controller, find the watch, and then we just add an object here of type text. Once we added the text, it will appear in a rotation that in this case we are not looking for. If we hit the R key to bring up the rotation gizmo, we will see it will start off in world space. But we want to rotate in local space. That means relative to its parent. Then we can drag the red arc to rotate only on the x-axis. And by holding the control key, we can make sure it snaps in 30 degrees increments to then end up at 90 degrees. I intentionally made the text upside down such that it matches the face of the watch. We can now use G for grab to bring up the position gizmo and move the text roughly in a correct position. If we now move back a bit, we will see that the Comforta font is actually already applied because this font is global and it just generally applies to all text components. We will next want to scale the text down because it currently is simply too big. If we hit the S key, then we enter the scaling gizmo and we can scale down for it to roughly match the size of text that we're looking for. Finally, with G, hitting G twice for local translation relative to the watch. I'm moving the text roughly in the center. Now, because this is not fun to watch the entire text upside down all the time, I'm going to go ahead and rotate the left quest controller. This doesn't matter because the translation is going to be overwritten by whatever the controller gives us in input transformations. So I select the left quest controller, hit R for rotate, hit R again for local space rotation, and I simply rotate by 180 degrees, holding control to snap to increments. Now moving, we can see the watch is actually rotated correctly. And if we look at this in the Oculus Quest, the orientation will be completely correct because the controller will be positioned to our controller anyway. And the watch is still correctly rotated to the controller as long as you rotated the controller and not the watch. Okay, I think it's time to remove the face of the watch. And we do that by going back to the object properties, selecting the face of the watch, opening the mesh component, and then changing our material from flat opaque textured to simply flat opaque, and this will remove the texture. We will see that it changed the color. That is because the material properties from one pipeline to another cannot be adapted. 
So we just simply go ahead and select the black color here. Finally, we can select our text. Opening the text component, we see that we have a range of different settings here to change the appearance of the text and the content. So we're going to just go ahead and add some default text in this case. And since we want the hour display to be a different color from the minute display, I'm going to go ahead and only add the hour here. And then we are going to create a second object in a minute to represent the minutes. We have a black outline around this text. And we can simply remove that by bringing the outline ranges together. In this case, we select 0.4. And we notice the appearance barely changed. Yet if we move the text with G, it no longer has the outline. Now that we have adapted the text, we can go ahead and control D for duplicate, which gives us a second identical object, which we can now adapt for the seconds. If you do not like keyboard shortcuts, you can also right click and duplicate. But in this case, this object can be selected and we can simply move it down by dragging the green axis, which is the Y axis. We now want to change the color of the second text to the beautiful green it had before. We cannot just simply go ahead and change the color here because this will change the color of both. That is because they are sharing the same material. In this case, it is the default font material. To change this second text components material, we need to create a independent material. And we can create materials by going to Views, Resources, and Materials, then click on Create. This will add our new material down at the bottom, and we will just rename this to green text. Going back to the scene, we can make sure that our second text component is selected, and then we can drag and drop this green text material into the material slot in our text component. Going back, our text just completely disappeared, and that is because we're using the wrong pipeline we need to make sure to change font opaque to distance field vector, which is the text shader. If we now finish off by selecting the correct texture, this is the default font texture, we will see that we're back at where we were before, and that is a white text. Now though, if we change the color of this text, we will see that the text changes independently from the other text. We can, of course, if we wanted to make the other text component green as well, select the other text component and select the green material, and then it would be green too. In this case, we want to keep them independent. We can select the other, choose a different default text. Finally, we'll go ahead and rename these to hours and the other two minutes. Second part of this tutorial is going to be changing this text via a JavaScript component. We will add the JavaScript component to the watch object and give it two parameters, one for the object that has the hours text and one that has the minutes text. So let's start by going into our JavaScript folder in the asset browser, click new JavaScript component, then right click rename and call this watchface.js. If we double click our JavaScript file and have our systems set up correctly, it will open whatever you configured to open by default for JavaScript files. The first thing we are going to change is the name of the component. Because the file name does not represent the name of the component, any file could contain multiple components. We will need to rename every component separately. Next, we are going to remove some default code that we no longer need. And last but not least, we're going to add two parameters that are of type object and to Visualize what this does. I'm going to switch to a side-by-side -side view with the editor and quickly go ahead and add this component to our 
watch object. Once I saved the code in the JavaScript file, it will appear in the list of components on add component. Selecting watch face and opening the component, we currently see param here. And if we go ahead and now change this to a WL type object and remove the default, which is always null, then we already see it switched to a drop-down list where we can select any object and even use an eye picker tool to select other objects in the scene outline. I'm going to add two of these. One is going to be the hours and one is going to be the minutes. Saving it, it will automatically update in the editor and we can select the hours for the hours and the minutes for the minutes. Every configuration in the editor is already done. All we need to do now is get access to these components from the JavaScript code. We do this by accessing the hours object using this.hours and then the get component function to retrieve a component with a given type. In this case, we will want to store this component and make sure that we can access it later. We're simply going to do exactly the same thing for the minutes component. Now there's one important difference between init and start. Init is like a constructor where we just initialize all our variables to a default. It does not guarantee that any other components have been initialized at this point. Start, on the other hand, is only called if this component, the watch face component, is actually active. So we can go ahead on watch and we can deactivate the watch face component this way. Init will still be called because this component exists and it needs to be initialized. But start will only be called the first time the watch face component is activated. This might be, for example, through a different JavaScript component. We're going to keep it active for now, but effectively this means that until the component is started, until it's active, we don't necessarily know that these parameters have been set up correctly. So what we want to do is move these to start instead. We no longer need the init function because there's nothing to do in init, so we remove this. And now what we want to do next is update our text with the correct time. And getting the time and hours and seconds and minutes in JavaScript is actually very easy. Getting the hours and minutes is a matter of creating a new date object that we can also cache in start instead. And then with this date object, just simply get hours which will get us the hours. And the minutes is just as simple. Next, we simply assign the text to our components. Now let's check this out in virtual reality. What we're expecting is that it shows the correct time. We can put in localhost 8080 on our Oculus Quest. We can enter VR. And we will see that it is 7 p.m. currently at where I am. I happen to know that this is actually incorrect because I have other watches around me here. Uh, so let's see what is going wrong. And it's merely a simple JavaScript mistake. And switching back to the quest, everything should be automatically reloaded. And we can see that the time is now finally correct. Now what you just witnessed there was probably kind of magical. The JavaScript reloading without the page reloading in the Oculus Quest. You probably don't have that out of the box and I want to show you how to enable that. If you go to Views, Preferences and then deselect Forceful Page Reloads, this will allow the page to stay active, including the VR session. So it just reloads once the editor detects any change in your JavaScript files. This also works if you package, but make sure to package. If you click on package changes when switching to another window, this will work very, very fluently with your desktop browser. And that is already it. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you haven't already, make sure to join the Wonderland Engine Discord. We're always happy to welcome new people. And if you have any questions or issues, feel free to post them there. Wonderland Engine is free. Make sure to sign up on wonderlandengine.com.